Wait, wait. I want to take say that one more time because I want because I, I, you know I hear a lot of people say, well, fitness. You know, their people are just going to drop their memberships and as things get tight. But what I'm hearing you say is you you actually think boutique fitness is going to come out of this and even stronger than it was before we went in. Hello, and welcome to the Hire Yourself podcast. We publish episodes twice a week about franchising and business. Each Monday, we'll release a 30-minute episode where we dive deep into a topic. Thursdays are our shorter, lighter episodes where we will discuss things like business resources or topics of personal growth. I am one of your hosts, Pete Gilfillan, and I'm joined with my business partner, Nat Truitt. And together, we have every experience in business and franchise ownership. We have worked hard over the years to realize our dreams and control our own destinies. Our experience will help you become a better business owner and franchisee so that you can live life on your own terms. All right, Nat, I'm super excited for our guest today. We have our very good friend, Lance Freeman, on with us today, the president of Franchise Development at Exponential. Lance, it is a pleasure to have you here today. Ah, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, Pete and Nat. Great to see you guys, and uh, I'm excited to catch up with you guys. Yeah, well, I, I was thinking as we started, and we, we were talking a little bit before we were taping today, uh, I, I was just laughing. You're telling me it's 102 degrees there. And I think it was like 36 degrees when I took the dog out today. So uh, I'm a little jealous of the weather that you have going right now. Uh, we, we call it a dry heat here in, uh, <laughs> in Phoenix, but uh, we're actually about 15 degrees above, above normal. But you get you get used to it. I'm sure like, you get used to the cold to some degree, but it's, yeah. uh, it's hot. You know, people are already uh, having to barricade inside. So now they're now they're even having to stay in even more. <laughs> oh boy. Oh wow. Crazy stuff. Well, Lance, I think, you know, from your, your standpoint, I've known you for a long time and I want to start with a little bit of your background in franchising. I know you've been in franchising for a very long time. So tell us a little bit about your background and how you got started in franchising. I appreciate the question. Every time I kind of share this with folks, uh, it makes me feel old because I was thinking I got it started franchising in 95. So as you start doing the math on that, but two and a half decades, but I kind of fell into it pretty early in life and uh, met up with an original entrepreneur of a concept that later he started to franchise the model in and I became one of the early franchisees in that system. So kind of um, for the first 10 years, almost uh, learned a little bit as you went, you know, and which was, uh, which was a good experience in, in itself, but I became a multi-unit franchisee in that system. And then uh, you don't see them as much in today's systems, but it became Bought what's called a master franchise or uh, model. So uh, it's an area developer model where you actually support franchisees and develop the market. And I really, I think it's probably during that time I figured out that I really like building things and, and the development side of it was really what got me kind of sparked and, and jazzed. So I built out a market and uh, was doing well with my business. And it was also in the, the fitness lane. Uh, it's it's uh, it was my passion at a at a very early stage in life. So I kind of stayed in that lane for two and a half decades, but was uh, approached by an investor group to sell my businesses. And at that time, wasn't really interested in it, which is maybe a good thing, but I had an opportunity to, to uh, take a, a few nice checks and exit that and uh, kind of wanted to figure out what I was going to do when I grew up uh, in life, <laughs> you know, but uh, knew a little bit about franchising and, and development. It was a company that was uh, actually good, injecting some new money in it. And they had brought in a a new CEO that had previously been with Yum Brands, which is uh, one of the larger franchisors in the world. They asked me to, to come in and develop uh, a new concept that they were rolling out. And I, you know, I actually didn't know what it was be, going to be like working for somebody else. I'd pretty much been entrepreneurial at a pretty young age. And, but I thought, you know, it might be a fun experience while I was figuring out kind of what the next thing was and it would be a, an opportunity to to build something, boy, I probably learned more about franchising and probably operational support in three years than I had the previous 10, uh, largely because of that CEO that had been with Yum. And so that was a great experience for me. And I, I learned a lot from that. And then uh, kind of, again, decided that, you know, I, I think I really wanted to stay in the development lane of franchising. I really enjoyed kind of being a catalyst for helping people realize their dreams of business ownership and, and uh, navigate through that process, having done that myself and successfully. And so joined a partner, a partnership group uh, that uh, developed brands. And then we met up with Anthony Geisler, the CEO of Exponential about five years ago. Gosh, he had, he was uh, in the transaction buying Club Pilates with, uh, there was a, a few dozen 
few dozen licenses there, you know, at that time in a, in a very kind of legacy type brand. And, uh, you know, fast forward now, it's been about five years, uh, April actually. And now we're 3000 licenses and eight brands in the exponential. And it's been just a phenomenal journey with him. You know, what kind of gets me excited every day is I get to do you know, something I love passionate yeah, sure. about. And, uh, you know, we'll talk a little bit about this on the call today, but just he's a fantastic operator. So, it's, I'm so let's, let's take a step back, right? So Anthony buys Club Pilates, right, and starts building and stuff like that. And I know that he got the opportunity to sell it uh, to private equity, and then he ultimately bought it back and created Exponential, right? So there's been a bit of a journey with it, yeah. uh, but certainly it all started with Club Pilates. So tell us a little bit about Anthony's vision as he started Exponential, what he wanted to build. What are you guys building at Exponential? Yeah, oh, that's a great question. So I think initially he saw quite an opportunity in boutique fitness. He had previously built one of the, probably the first boutique fitness companies in fitness called LA Boxing Club. And UFC had later acquired that and they had kind of a different vision to take the company. So he eventually moved on from that. But he saw boutique fitness as it being very early uh, in terms of nationally franchised brands. And even we even look at that today that way a little bit still, you know, people might argue that it's getting kind of crowded out there, but largely if you look at, you know, 500 club type brands, there's, you know, less than, less than a dozen of them. And we own most of them. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think he came in with the opportunity with club Plies and saw an opportunity to really leverage a lot of his skill sets as a great operator to build something special as a first mover uh, and a segment and a vertical that he could really open it up to the masses. I always kind of related to like what Massage Envy did to retail massage. And I think Club Lies was so wildly successful with kind of bringing that model to the market. I always kind of say bring, you know, really the best distribution channel for that vertical, if like Starbucks did for coffee, you know, we did for Pilates that, you know, he, came to a point where he did take on a partner in, in TPG and said, how do we just continue to do this with the best verticals and the best brands in, in boutique fitness and kind of grab what at that time he looked at as maybe the, the core kind of four core verticals and then four merging verticals to really kind of build a great, great eight in terms of the largest boutique fitness company on earth and really start to create an exponential pass or an application where members can actually go into each of these verticals and access them through our membership and really not just win in the market, but dominate. And so that was kind of the, the vision. And as you mentioned, you know, he took on a, a, part, a, a very large private equity partner in uh, TPG to, to, to do that. But very early on saw that that was going to be cumbersome and take a lot of time more than he wanted to. It was a lot for him was, you know, looking at speed of market, being first, the first mover and, and really the best vertical and really controlling real estate, the labor pool, marketing strategies, and wanting to get out ahead of everybody so far that no one could catch us. And so, as you said, he bought, bought it back. Um, he took on another fund with a partner and, and lots, lots of uh, his own money to buy it back so he could be more nimble and then started to buy brands and move very quickly to uh, get these brands built out. And so he takes over a brand, Lance. One of the, I think, core things you've shared with me is that he'll take kind of the core principles of Club Pilates, what made it so successful, and then apply them to the new one that he's taken over. Is that, is that right? It's exactly right. Um, he believes that, you know, he is a, a great operator, and that's what he is, and a leader. And so he's been able to really overlay that operational platform that's been very successful in Club Pilates and be able to plug that in, if you will, into these other verticals. There are some verticals we've bought and what I call exponentialized and kind of, you know, done the branding and the market research and then rolled them out from a very early stage. But there's a few that were substantial brands that had, you know, hundreds of, of uh, stores already operating and that were great brands, but I you will know, even mention them, so like a cycle bar or, or a pure bar, but operationally had, let's call it a lot of opportunity uh, that we saw where we could take that model to a whole other level by really bringing the exponential platform to it, you know, taking their average unit volumes to new heights uh, through the operational model. A lot of it, you know, it sounds like we had some rocket science uh, ideas here at principles, but a lot of it was really just being bringing good business principles to these models. Like 
keeping your doors open during business hours, <laughs> having someone in the front half of the business to actually answer the phones and, and greet you know, a new potential mm-hmm. member, uh, implementing a, a reoccurring revenue model so that you know, we would drive membership and reoccurring revenue in the business rather than this kind of package-driven model, which is kind of you know, up and down every other month. So, okay. um, so kind of adding those to the models has really um, driven success to all these brands. You know, we're proud to say we've never closed an exponential unit. We have a hundred percent success with, with uh, all brands. Well, congratulations then. So just, so let's kind of fast forward. So Anthony built exponential wonderful yeah. facility in, in Los Angeles. Right. And he's, he's got now his eight different brands all yeah. under the, under the kind of the boutique fitness umbrella. So tell us a little bit about where exponential is today in terms of number of um, number of franchisees. Just give us kind of a state of what have you got today? And then what's your grand vision? Where, where do you plan to grow this or build it to? So today, uh, Globally, we've got about 3,000 licenses awarded. We have about 2,000 of those units open and operating. So, you know, yeah, so two thirds of the stores are open. A high percentage of our franchisees are multi unit owners. In fact, our average franchisee and exponential owns 2.8 licenses. So they're, you know, opening up on average three over time. So they have development agreements to scale. Um, so, but the good news that you can see there is these, these owners are getting these studios open. Uh, their second and third units open, so there's not a lot of what we call snows or sold not open licenses relative to the opening schedule. So we're getting them open. That type of you know that numbers, those numbers I just mentioned, really does make us the largest boutique fitness company. Period. There's any any way you slice it, whether you look at doors open, members members that we have, number of classes operated, you know, revenues brought in, we are the biggest uh, by a pretty big gap. That's kind of where it stands to today. You know, kind of. I'd say as a company, it's very financially strong because Exponential kind of can fund some of these new, I, I talked about the core four and then these emerging brands. We can put a, we can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on market research. We can put a full you know, support team in place to support these openings before we ever have a royalty coming in. So it's a really neat position to be in. Yeah. So what's the vision? 4,000, 5,000 locations open. What's the vision? Yeah, so for the for each of these brands, they're they're typically close to about a thousand a thousand unit type brands. Uh, just for relevant examples, you've got like Orange Theory Fitness out there that has twelve hundred locations operating today. We would have a, a pretty similar footprint to them. You know, like a, a Massage Envy again, pretty similar footprint. They've got you know, somewhere to the same same amount of uh, twelve hundred to fourteen hundred studios uh, open. So we'll have about a thousand units per brand. So if you look across eight brands, close to about eight thousand units operating, you know, domestically, if you look at it from that standpoint, is kind of the path we're on. So still a lot, a lot of inventory left. Um, there's only really two brands that have a, a substantial bite of their inventory that's uh, you know that's spoken for. One would be Club Plus. We already have nine hundred licenses awarded on that one. And then Pure Bar, which has, uh, I think, 700 plus licenses. So a lot of the other ones have a lot of inventory left. And we're, so we've got a lot of, a lot of fun, fun work to do over the next few years here. So what is that, the, having the, uh, that many franchisees opened and stuff like that? The, the question I have for you is, does that give you guys any competitive advantage? Are you guys doing anything that kind of benefits the, the members as well as the franchisees? From a franchisee standpoint, you have just literally unlimited resources and a brain trust that is supporting you to ensure your success. I always tell people, you know, we're not a shared silo model. So meaning every brand has its own president, its own CMO marketing team and you know, full, full staff. So there's not a shared, you know, one CMO that kind of supports all the brands as an example. But those CMOs or those presidents all get together once a week to share best practices things that are working in their brands, things that will challenges that they may have. So there's a, there's a, a lot of strength and power in knowledge. And there's a lot of, as you know, if you've met a lot of the presidents, if not all of them, you know, they're a very uh, talented group with a lot of great ideas and a lot of fitness and franchising pedigree. So that again, brings a lot of value as a company, I think being a part of that. And so if you're a franchisee in one of those systems, that's great because it's a great system, but you're also part of exponential, which brings a lot more than just, just being a part of that system. Yeah. I think in addition to that, you know, I, I call it the X factor. You know, if you're a franchisee in one of our brands, you really do have the advantage of being a part of the family. As an example, you know, if, if, if a member is considering 
you know, a membership in another, let's say a bar vertical, um, or, or becoming a member in a pure bar, why would they consider any other vertical when they're looking at the best brand, you know, again, again, I'm biased, but the best brand in that vertical, which is pure bar, but also they can, they can purchase an X pass and then have access in any of our other seven verticals. So it's a game changer in terms of a franchisee in our system being able to have the advantage in the market over other competition if their brands or other independents that are out there. So can, that's hey, a huge Lance, can, can you explain the, the X-Pass? Because most people don't know what the X-Pass is. Sure, absolutely. I, I think that was part of you know the exponential idea with Anthony knowing that when we did the market research, knowing that today it's something to the tune of um, more than 46% of the market in fitness is, is already engaging in boutique fitness. And a, a very high percentage of them have two to three boutique fitness memberships already. So his idea was, you know, well, if we already know that they're snacking and cheating in these other brands, um, why not keep it all in the family and, and, and make it an opportunity where they can become, a, a, you know, an elite member of, of eight brands. And so that was kind of the, the idea or the brainchild behind it. So he invested a few million dollars in the tech and the CRM system. So all brands are in the same CRM system and an application um, so that we can do this. So we'll actually be able to, you'll see it, see it start showing up in Costco and Target, all major retailers that we've got contracts with already that you'll be able to buy the X-Pass. The X-Pass is not like a uh, unlimited membership, but it gives you access from your, your base membership to access these other verticals and again, as I mentioned, kind of snack and cheat, which in turn uh, many times will turn into an additional membership. So, sure. but again, it keeps them in the family. Keeps it's a retention piece as well because again, instead of one of our members leaving our brand to go somewhere else, they they stay stay home for longer uh, because they have access to our other brands, and that variety keeps uh, keeps them happy. Yeah. yeah, that's very cool. I, I consider it like a Disney Hopper Pass. Yeah, so. there you go. So, all right. So you guys are clicking along 2000 locations open with your eight different brands, right? You got another thousand licenses sold. You got the potential to go to 8,000, the best I can tell listening to you, right? You got all these wonderful things, great leaders. You got all the great programs like Xbox, Xbox. And then we have a pandemic. We have the black swan event. Everybody's clicking along. We're growing and stuff like that. And, and that's changed all of our lives. I mean, we're all Zooming now, and holidays and business meetings and all that. And everybody's in shelter at their houses. So tell us a little bit about first the pandemic, how it's impacted exponential organization. I'd say my initial response to this has made it, made it stronger. We were very fortunate, again, just because of our resources that we already had what was called an o, an on-demand go platform that was put in place that was an initiative for 2020 that was more of a retention piece, but we knew that it would be an added added value for our franchisees, um, for members to be able to take classes online, you know, from home. And so when pandemic came, it was an immediate pivot for us to be able to go from what we call kind of the four walls model where you're inside the, the brand to a digital, a digital model where you're, you're still connecting with the brand, taking class and be still, still a member, uh, you know, and so that was huge for us because what we did was we offered the on-demand go system to all of our membership free if they kept their draft on. So we had more than 60% of our, our uh, members at our 2000 locations that kept their draft on, and have kept it on through pandemic. And then, you know, from a support standpoint, we said, well, well how do, you know, we, we had three main initiatives. One was obviously continue driving revenues. And it wasn't just keeping draft on. We had, we've done everything from, uh, you know, gift card programs to uh, retail happy hours to, to drive additional revenue streams for franchisees. But we also said that we need to reduce their, their expenses right now. So we, we got, you know, the, again, beauty of, of exponential is we have a full real estate team in the center of the, our uh, our whole command center there, and we work with all of our REITs, our you know landlords and, and trust relationships to to get them deferred rents and rental abatements so they're not paying rent through this period, and then you know reducing uh, other overhead components of that that to really support them in this time, and then you know really the uh, the other initiative is obviously retention. You retain those members. So what was incredible to see was we. 
we saw a 0% increase in member cancellations. It was flat, which was great because that told us that our members want to come back. You know, I think as you take people through troubled waters, right? And I, I've heard things like Anthony does weekly calls with the franchisees, you know, to kind of keep communicating and talking, helping people work through it. Can you tell us a little bit about kind of how he's done that? It's because it's pretty amazing to me. When you're in business, you want to be proud of what you're doing, you know, and I could not be, I'm just kind of overwhelming with, with how proud I am of Exponential and Anthony's leadership because, you know, he's really stepped up big time. I always say, you know, you don't know if you got a real partner until it becomes time to be a partner. And, you know, and people always ask the question, well, what does it look like in a worst case scenario? Well, well, like you said at the top here, it's a black swan event, you know, so this is as bad as it gets. So he's stepped up in a huge way to support his franchisees, um, everything from you know, cutting their expenses to, I would say the biggest thing, really leadership, you know, and, and just every week, you know, multiple times a week getting on on Zoom calls like we are with this entire franchise community, you know, giving them real, real feedback and real, real data that, you know, we're, we're watching, but giving them also solutions and leadership that, and, 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 you know, again, leadership, that we're going to get through this. And I, I think that's been huge. Um, you know, you can validate with our franchisees right now and, you know, like, like the, the, all of us on the call, you know, we don't know exactly what today, tomorrow looks like, but they'll tell you I do know one thing for sure, and that's, you know, my, my franchisor is there supporting me, you know, every, around the clock and getting me through this. Well, that's great to hear because that's why you invest in a franchise, right? Is that partnership, somebody to kind of help you be there by your side as you go yeah. through things. So, yeah. all right. So we're, we're now starting to open up the country again. Yeah. Right? So now we have to start preparing our franchisees to get back open right? Open the doors and get rolling again. So tell us a little bit about kind of what Exponential is doing to help the franchisees get going back, open their doors and, and engaging. Again, um, one of the things I've always said about, you know, Anthony and Exponential support is it's proactive support rather than reactive support. Obviously we had to react to a pandemic as no one, no one, uh, you know, had that one on the, <laughs> on the horizon. I don't, well, maybe some people do, but not, not many. But, um, you know, when it came, you know, he was already planning for the reopening strategy very early on, knowing that this wasn't a forever thing and that was going to be really important to be ready for that um, when the time came. So he's been investing in everything from san you know, uh, san sanitation wipes to um, other products to help our, our franchisees get back, you know, on the, on the opening path whether it be branded masks or we have air purification units that go in our HVAC systems that purify that and sanitize every um, cubic you know, inch in air uh, in the studios to helping them with, you know, get the equipment for temperature checks and, and, and really have a, a proper reopening path um, that's responsible and that will but allow them to get back to business. And so, in fact, I saw last week, um, it was like a 34 uh, slide PDF uh, SOP on you know the reopening procedures, and so they've put a ton of time into it. They've invested in making sure it's done right. They've stockpiled you know cleaning supplies and things to make sure that they're ready for this. In fact, um, we're already on the path. I mean, we opened. It's uh, it's obviously largely dictated by um, you know the state, the governors, and and state requirements. But we were able to open reopen fifty four studios this last earlier this last week. And I think by the end of today, we were supposed to have close to 150 reopened by May 15th. I think it is, we're supposed to have about 680 reopened. The response so far has been incredible. You know, that was always a question, you know, for everyone on our minds was, you know, how quickly are our members going to want to come back to this? And we knew that they would, they would want to, because it was evident in the, the lack of, of, of cancellations, member cancellations, but response within just days has, has been great. All right. So, so we're starting to open up our doors. You're getting some good success. I mean, I think yeah. people just want to get back to their lives, right? I mean, yeah. I was talking to somebody the other day and they said, I just want to go to my yoga class. I don't want to do it in my basement, right? I want to go and be with my friends and, and take the class. And so, yeah. uh, so I get that, right? So we're, we're clicking along. So let's fast forward now. So we're open the doors, we're going and all that kind of stuff. And so my question for you, and a lot of people are like, what's going to happen with the economy? What's going to, you know, we're in a recession and there's unemployment. 
Tell me a little bit about kind of what you see the future. Is, is it a good time in the near future to invest in a business, to invest in a franchise? Yeah. I'm sure there's lots of different perspectives on, you know, recession or not, or that sort of thing. You know, I'll, I'll share with you. We don't really feel like this is an 08 type recession. We feel it's more of a blip. Um, but regardless of, 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 you know, whether it's recession or not, we do have the history that tells us that fitness has performed really well after 08. In fact, it was one of about four segments that actually grew. Uh, we grew in 08, from 08 to 11, we grew from a $19 billion industry to a $21 billion industry, one of few, a few segments that actually grew after 08. So what the data showed is that people traveled less, uh, they spent less of their expendable income on luxury items and you know, uh, eating out. But when, one of the things that they did uh, spend more dollars on was feeling better, reducing stress, health, wellness, and fitness, um, which we saw uh, in, our, in our business at that time. So we're already seeing that in our model, uh, and we're really excited about, you know, especially relative to our model, because we know kind of some of what I just mentioned, we can go back in a more controlled setting that members will feel a lot more comfortable going back to versus trying to go back into a 50,000 square foot, you know, big box gym where, you know, how do you, how do you control that as, as much? It's, I'm sure it's a little harder. We know that people are going to want to be healthier after this. We know what you know, most people that are having struggles with the COVID nineteen are people that have weaker immune systems and and uh, you know have health issues. So people are going to want to be more healthy. So that benefits us again. Um, so all those indicators really show a positive surge for us. Even predictors are saying we will be up as much as twenty five percent where we were pre-pandemic after when this when this kind of clears out. Wait, wait, I wanted to so, take and say that one more time because I want because I, I, you know I hear a lot of people say, well, fitness, you know, there people are just going to drop their memberships and as yeah. things get tight. But what I'm hearing you say is you you actually think boutique fitness is going to come out of this and even stronger than it was before we went in. Oh yeah, we'll be up where we were even pre-pandemic when this is done. Uh, again, largely for a number of reasons, but that's why I said at the beginning of the call, I feel like this is going to strengthen us because there's a number of things that are going to happen. One, and, and, and I don't wish you know, uh, ill will on anyone, but it's, it's, independents are going to really struggle and, and a number of them are not going to make it through this. Uh, the strong will survive. And so it does weaken the competition we have in the marketplace um, because the strong will survive. So that's kind of certainly one thing. I, I, I think that, again, you know, what we've talked about in terms of people moving even further away, the, the movement's already been going on for the last 10 years, but from the bottom and more towards the boutique setting will we'll continue, um, but at a higher rate now because of COVID-19. So those things, uh, plus we know that people are gonna wanna be healthier and get back to working out and you know, we'll, we'll benefit, all benefit us. Interestingly enough, the on-demand system that I mentioned to you, the Go, the Go model, We've done over 350,000 workouts with, with that model just in a few weeks. And what's interesting is it's not just members of, you know, that were current members of, of Exponential, but we, these are new members that weren't members of Exponential that are engaging in the on-demand platform. So uh, those members are now, when we reopen in the four walls model, we're going to be, become members of Exponential. A lot of them will. And so it's actually a, mem a new member aggregator is what it is. And so there's a lot of opportunities with us, you know, to really drive the business well beyond where it was pre-pandemic. So without question, uh, we're, we're very bullish on where we're going to be at, at the end of this. Well, we're, we're going to be excited to watch where you go. Nat, I know you were thinking about, did you have a question you wanted to ask? <laughs> I don't remember, but I do know that I was, I always work out at the gym, so I never had any home equipment. I was a few weeks too late, so then I'm searching around trying to find dumbbells and bikes and everything, and it, supply and demand, everything was twice as much, but I did end up buying some uh, dumbbells and an Airdyne bike for the basement and everything, but I'm, I'll be the first one at the, waiting in line at the gym to get back yeah. in, that's for yeah. sure. We hear, we hear that, <laughs> uh, you can't imagine how much we hear that, you know, uh, that's that's the census yeah yeah absolutely so lance any other advice you'd give to people as they as, as we come out of this and they're thinking about their future i know you a lot of your franchisees are former executives right they're, they're people that are successful business owners or executives 
and they look to invest in a franchise. So any advice you would give to people as we look forward to the future of, hey, should I invest in a franchise? Well, um, I'll tell you one thing. I mean, I always say kind of fortunes are made and lost during times like this. And um, it's, what's interesting now is I've got people coming out of the woodworks that are some of the larger investors I've ever worked with wanting to do really substantial deals with us because they see opportunity right now. And so, you know, those folks are, are smart folks that, you know, they're less, they're more immune to these types of events uh, financially. And so they are kind of almost doubling down right now, if you will. And, and for good reason. I mean, I think um, if you look at a number of things in terms of our business model, if you're looking to get into retail, something that's semi-absentee, um, you're going to sign a, a lease, you know, and a lease is going to typically be a, you know, 10, 10 year and, and possibly longer commitment if you renew. So if you're looking to kind of negotiate some, some favorable terms there now is probably one of the better times that we've seen in, in, in recent time to do that. Um, because again, landlords are wanting to keep their, their occupancies high and they know that there's going to be, you know, there's, they're talking as much as 20 to 25% of uh, independent businesses are not going to reopen. So um, they want to get strong franchise models into their, into their real estate because uh, it builds value in our properties. And they're very, uh, they have a very uh, strong appetite to work with us right now. What's kind of neat is it's more of a buyer's market for us right now when it comes to real estate because we're negotiating more rental payments. We're negotiating more TI dollars. We're able to even negotiate language that says, hey, if there is a recurrence of pandemic, that you're going to immediately, you know, abate our rent uh, through that period so that our franchisees aren't paying during that time. So we, it's built in now, you know, cool. so things like that, um, that you couldn't negotiate, you know, if it were not non-pandemic, not to mention the fact that you're getting a lower lease rate for the next 10 years than you would if you were in a non-pandemic time. So those are substantial opportunities that we see because our financials are so strong and exponential. We're business as usual when it comes to funding. So SBA loans are at a 10 year low when it comes to interest rates. So I always say mm -hmm. when there's cheap money out there for investors, that's again why they come out of the woodworks because if you can lock in, you know, historically low interest rates for the next you know, 10 years and beyond, we're seeing longer amortization periods now with SBA loans. Again, that's, that's opportunity when you're looking at return and really setting yourself up for success with your business. So as crazy as it sounds, Pete, and I don't want to you know, sound so healthy here, but it's a great time to be looking to get into business for the right investor right now because of some of the opportunities we're you know, getting in right now. Yeah, that's great. And I think labor too. There's going to be more oh. labor available because it was such a tight market before. the Without a question. Event. Yeah. yeah. Well, Lance, congratulations on all your success. We're, Nat and I are very excited to watch you kind of as where you guys go forward and, and watch your continued growth and success. So thank you so much for spending uh, your valuable time with us today uh, and sharing your story. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Hire Yourself podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, give us a rating, and leave a comment on iTunes or wherever you're listening to our podcast. Hire Yourself offers some great resources on our website at hireyourself.com. And if you would like more content regularly, follow us on LinkedIn or Facebook. We look forward to you listening again to help you on your journey of living life on your own terms.